Hello and welcome to this review of my Robotron K keyboard. Let's get going, ya! Yeah? I bought this keyboard for 20 euros, which is a pretty decent deal. It was proxied to me by someone who knew a little bit about Robotron and directed me to an online museum site where they have a huge amount of information on the subject, which was quite interesting, even though it was in German. VEB Robotron was an East German electronics manufacturer. Yes, we're finally tackling a keyboard from the DDR, which is short for German Democratic Republic. And as we all know, if a country's got democratic in the name, then, well, it definitely is, isn't it? They used a variety of sensing mechanisms, including membrane, mechanical, magnetic read, and hall effect, the latter of which this keyboard is an example of. As you would expect, these were the highest quality boards. As they state on the museum site, Die hochwertigsten Tastaturen waren Halttastaturen. Bei ihnen saß unter jeder Taste ein Magnet, der bei Drücken an einem Halssensor vorbeigeführt wurde. Diese Tastaturen waren weitgehend immun gegen Korrosion, Verschmutzung. <laughs> Verschmutzung. That's gotta be my new favorite German word from now on. <laughs> Robotron's keyboards were largely manufactured by a division in Auerbach. No, not the Auerbach in the Oberpfalz that cherry keyboards are made in, but Auerbach Vogtland, which is located about 150 kilometers to the north. There are in fact a whole slew of Auerbachs in Germany, according to the German Wikipedia. The keyboard is model K7631, which I only know because of that museum website. The board itself has no identifying marks of any kind, neither branding nor a model number. It was used with the A7100 computer and K8918 terminal, neither of which I've ever heard of, obviously. According to this website, it used a serial interface called IFSS, which was a current loop-based protocol, and it used a shielded serial cable, which is this thing. The the connector appears to be aluminium or something, as it's metal but weighs absolutely nothing. The build of the unit is extraordinary. The top housing is actually made out of compressed polyurethane foam, which is the stuff that they use in car seats and upholstery. You can see some of it in the small cracks here and there and on the edges. This was done to save sheet iron, which had to be imported. It reminds me a bit of the Trabant car, which was actually made out of cotton. It's absolutely bizarre. It's not spongy though, they used a dense enough version of it that it does actually work as a housing, even though it's obviously somewhat brittle. There are quite a few cracks in the housing actually. Despite the top housing being foam, the unit weighs more than 3 kilos, which is roughly half again as heavy as an IBM Model M, impressive to say the least. The bottom of the keyboard is metal, as you can see. Apparently they figured they couldn't make the entire thing out of car seats. By the way, I didn't want to rob you of this image of a classic EP-ROM or EPROM or whatever it's supposed to be pronounced as. I think it looks beautiful, wouldn't you agree? The bottom also shows the feet, which are simple screwed-in plastic pegs. They're non-adjustable and they keep scratching up my table something awful. The layout is pretty bizarre as well. Of course, being a German keyboard, it was originally Quartz, but because the keycaps are uniprofile, I changed it to QWERTY, even though I can't use it over USB. Anyway, it has no F keys, but it does have a bunch of PF keys on the top right. The return key is on the spacebar row, escape is in the middle of the keyboard, and the arrow keys are in a block nav arrangement, which <laughs> sucks ass, by the way. I'm not completely sure when this keyboard was made, but the computer it came with was first released in 1985, at which point better layouts had definitely already been invented, but I guess that was in the corrupt decadent west. The caps are circle mount and really quite thick and heavy actually, they feel like solid plastic with a circle drilled out in the middle. They're also double shot ABS, so the lettering will never wear off. Noise. The key tops are spherical and they have these circular bases as well, which Siemens, their West German cousins, were also fond of using, like I showed on this K1197 ages ago. Unfortunately, it's missing one keycap here, which I seem to have lost somehow. Note that even the spacebar has this weird oval shape, but it's not depressed like the other keys, it has a flat top instead. 
The switches are Robotron Hall Effect, which are a linear switch and an interesting design that clip right out of the mounting rails, clearly an imitation of Micro Switch's Hall Effect SW series. It's loose enough that the switches often come right out when you try to pull off the keycaps. As you might be able to see, the Hall sensor is held PCB side, and the switches just slide over it through this open slot in the bottom. I gave them a good clean, but there's still some binding in the keys when pressed off axis. It's reasonably smooth otherwise though, as one would expect of a contactless switch. They remind me a bit of Cherry MX Black, but with more binding and less friction, if that makes sense. The weight is also comparable, a bit lighter I think, so not too fatiguing, although it's of course difficult to really judge that if you can't test it out in day-to-day -day usage. It's overall not a bad key feel, miles better than the Soviet Reed keyboard I reviewed two weeks ago, which was also a contactless magnetic keyboard. It can't really compete with Micro Switch SW Hall effect though. The binding issue, which is completely absent on the SW switches, is kind of a killer. They're also not as smooth as the Micro Switch switches, and they don't sound as good. That said, they do have a nice sound to them, very clacky, probably helped by the large housing and thick keycaps. Listen to this. Space bars rattly as hell though. Anyway, that's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.